paper servers. It's how you can get plugins on a Minecraft server. And in this video, we're going to show you how to get them in Minecraft 1.19. First and foremost, though, this isn't a public server. It's only meant for your friends, your family, people that you trust because it's hosted on your own computer and most importantly, your own internet. Now, because it is hosted on your own computer, you do need a decent computer in order to run a server and play Minecraft at the same time. And paper is more efficient than, let's say, a vanilla server or a Forge modded server, but it is still resource intensive. So you're going to need a decent computer in order to play Minecraft and run a server on your computer at the same time. And again, like I said, this is only meant for your friends, your family, people that you trust because it's hosted on your own network. That means that anyone who gets the IP address of this server can do things like DDoS you, which means take your internet offline basically, and figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates. It's super important that you only give this server out to your friends, your family, people that you can trust. However, what if you do want a public server? Or what if you don't have a good computer, right? You just want to be able to play Minecraft on your computer and let someone else worry about having a good enough system to be able to host the server. And last but not least, what if you don't want to have to worry about privacy and internet security and all that. You just want someone else to take care of that. Well, that's where Apex Minecraft hosting comes in. You check out Apex in the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to start a Minecraft paper server for 1.19 in under five minutes in just a few clicks. It's super, super easy to get a paper server up and running over there. Literally, you just select paper 1.19 from a drop-down box and boom, your server's up and running. From there, you can easily add plugins to your server from Apex's backend panel and it's super simple to do that. Plus, should you run into issues, you have someone to help you. 24 hours a day, seven day a week, chat support there to help you out with any issues, installing plugins, setting up your server, anything. It's all simple at Apex. And like I said, there's help if you need it. You can check Apex the first link down below the breakdown to XYZ slash Apex to get your server up and running. Don't have to worry about the hardware. Don't have to worry about security. You can just play. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and get paper up and running, assuming it's only for your friends and family and you have a good enough computer and internet to be able to run the server. To do that, you want to start off by going to the second link in the description down below. That's going to take you here. This is our text guide to getting your paper server up and running. It goes through everything you need to know here. However, once you're here, click on the download paper and see button. That's going to take you to paper's official download page where you want to select paper 1.19 in the top menu up here. Now, right now, paper is currently in beta. If it's not in beta, you'll know because, uh, well, there won't be all these warnings and the buttons will be blue instead of red. However, we're just doing this so you can get things up and running, but do know that things can crash and that there could and will be issues. So keep that in mind. Now, unless we're going to go ahead and click on the download button on the left hand side here. Again, it might be blue with a nice download icon. Otherwise, click this. It's good to go. Just know that you could experience issues. Nevertheless, with paper downloaded, you may need to keep it in the bottom left or save it on Mozilla Firefox. It all just depends, but it's got paper 1.19 in the title, so it's 100% safe. Plus, this is official paper download page, so nothing to worry about there. Anyway, we can go ahead and minimize our browser now, and from here, we want to right-click on our desktop, create a new folder. We're going to call this paper 1.19 server, right like so, and boom, there you go. That's a paper server folder. Now, we want to move the paper file we downloaded into this folder. Where's it at? It's in our our downloads folder. To get there, click the little Windows icon, top left of my screen, probably the bottom left of your screen or bottom center of your screen on Windows 11, and then type in downloads. You have this downloads file folder here. Open this up, and in here, you'll find paper 119. Drag and drop this into that paper folder on your desktop. Now, once this is in your paper folder here, you might have something that's just called paper, right? It might just look like this, paper 119. Now, Whatever this looks like, what we want to do is right click and rename and make sure it's just called paper, right? Like so. Now, for you, it may just be paper or it might be paper.jar. Either way is perfectly fine as long as it is an executable jar file named paper. Once you've got that, what we want to do is right click and create a new text document, right? So right click, new text document. Then we want to open up this new text document. In here, what we want to do is go ahead and go to the description. And in the description, you'll find this. This is basically how much RAM your server will have. Two gigabytes or four gigabytes. For the base of the server, we can do two gigabytes. Go ahead and copy that from the description. It's in the description down below. And paste that in this new text document. And then you want to do File, Save As and save this as a file named run.bat, exactly like so. Then you want to save the save type to all files. So the file name is run.bat and the save type is all files. Click save and boom, there we go, we have run.bat. You can actually delete the new text document to where there's only paper and run in here. Now, let's go ahead and double click on this run.bat file. And when we do that, it's going to go ahead and start the server. It's going to get things going, get things started up, but it's going to fail. As you can see, failed to load. So go ahead and 
Press any key to continue. Why did it do that? Because we need to agree to this file, the eula.txt. But Nick, I don't have any eula.txt. I don't have any of this. It just didn't work. It gave me some weird error. Well, in that case, what you need to do is run Java 17. Get Java 17 installed. Java 17 is required for your paper Minecraft server. So make sure you come here. It's on our website, linked in the description down below, and it's an in-depth guide to getting Java 17. It goes through everything you need to know to get Java for Minecraft. After you've got that, you may need to run the jar fix. What this will do is take the jar files to your computer and link them back to Java, but only do that after getting Java 17. Nevertheless, we can now go ahead and minimize our browser. And once we've done that, we can agree to the eula.txt. Again, you may need to double click run.bat if this didn't generate. Nevertheless, once you've got the eula.txt here, open that up. It'll just open in Notepad, and assuming you agree to the EULA right here, which we do, go ahead and change EULA equals false to EULA equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like that. Do File, Save, and boom, we have now agreed to the Minecraft EULA. Go ahead, double click on run.bat, and now your Minecraft server is going to start. Your paper 1.19 Minecraft server is starting up. You can see it's preparing the world. It is getting things up and running. We also have a plugins folder, which is awesome. Now, at this point, we can actually go ahead and join this server. You're the only person that can join this server right now, but I always recommend joining it at this point just to make sure everything is working correctly. So let me go ahead. I'm going to open up Minecraft Vanilla, latest release 1.19, and we are going to join this server. Now, to join our paper server from the main menu, click Multiplayer, and then click Direct Connection. Now, this is what we're going to use to join the server, the IP address of local host, exactly like that. We type that in, click Join Server, and on the left, boom, we joined right Right on into the server here. And as you can see, we are now in a Minecraft server. We can op ourselves in this server by coming over here into the console and typing OP and then our username, right like so, bam. And now we are opt-in game. We can do game mode creative and all that stuff. Now, you're the only person that can join this server using that method, using the local host method. Your friends will need to join via your public IP address, but before they can do that, you will need to port forward. Luckily, we have an in-depth guide in the description down below on how to port forward for a Minecraft server. It's helped nearly half a million people port forward over the years and it goes in depth going over everything you need to know to port forward for Minecraft. Once you've got that port forward done, you can get your public IP address and your friends will be able to uh, join this server without any problems. Also worth noting in the description, we have a guide on how to fix a broken Minecraft server. It's over 20 minutes of troubleshooting all the different problems that you could have with your Minecraft server. And should you have any issues, go give it a watch because it is going to help you so much fixing issues with your server. Last but not least in the description is a complete playlist of all of our Minecraft plugin guides. And speaking of plugins, you probably want to install a plugin on your Minecraft server. Well, go ahead and check out the video on your screen right now, which is going to show you exactly how to get plugins on your Minecraft server now that it is set up. We're going to throw how to download plugins, where to download them from, where it's trusted, and all of that stuff, and even showing you how to get config files and see what plugins are active once you're in game. It's all covered in that video, so check it out on your screen right now. Nevertheless, my name is Nick. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you in the next one.